Greetings, everyone. Hey, this is House of Prozorov. <clears throat> uh, this is another historical excerpt um, and <clears throat> referencing the Articles of Confeder Confederation versus the Constitution of the United States. And then surplanting those events or surplanting those concepts in a simplistic way onto student loan debt. Um, although my argument can obviously have an argument opposed against it. But if we were to be honest, um, the, a lot of problems that existed with the Articles of Confederation lasting at least some 10 years or so to speak, was it could not raise money, it could not collect taxes. Um, the states and the, the, the whatever the federal government could be considered at that time um, could not do away with its uh, high debt from the war in fighting England. Um, wondering who was the recipient of, of that debt, uh, which is an, an old, was it some banks, uh, other uh, international powers? Uh, well, history will tell us that if we do some research. But uh, the point that I want to get into is that we had to make amendments. We had to come up with the, the Constitution of the United States uh, so we would have a, a powerful enough government to manage our affairs uh, to allow collections of debt, uh, also for those who were in debt to receive some kind of payment that they were promised for fighting in the, um, <clears throat> the Revolutionary War. Transpose that to 2022 in the student loan debt fiasco that continues for many. Uh, many are in six figures of student loan debt. Uh, they were not able to buy houses or anything with that as previous generations were. Uh, I would say the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. The students mainly spent their student loan money on tuition and food and renting housing. They could not actually buy many assets from the student loans. And the student loans have been, uh, uh, for in many cases, capped at $10,000 because of federal rules that allow the, 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 that force. If you any $10,000 transaction requires the FBI and other people to look at it. So they never went over $10,000 in student loans um, for for decade, for at least a decade. So it did not keep, in, uh, in my humble opinion, pace with the cost of inflation. So the students didn't get, they were being curtailed in the money they could receive. Um, please argue against that if you wish, but uh, that's how I see it. And that's how I seen it for people that went to school for about a half a decade to get their PhD. Uh, so that being said, you know, we, we had to make bankruptcy laws so people could move on with their lives. But instead, we've got people from the 90s with six-figure student loan debt that cannot proceed forward because bankruptcy cannot be declared on their debt. And we keep what, what, what keeps being thrown out there as an argument, which is sort of an invalid argument, hey, I paid my student loans off. Why can't they? I mean, that's really to take one variable. We don't know who they is, who is it that can't pay their student loan debt? Have their parents passed away, as mine have? Were they left with any property? No, I'm propertyless in America. Uh, many are propertyless in America. They have no parents, no property. They have basically, as what was argued in the past over 100 years ago, that propertyless men should not vote. Um, they should not really be allowed uh, freedom of, of choice as women too were denied suffrage even longer and of course the slaves as we know were denied all sorts of rights up to the 60s and 70s but student loan holders are being denied the same rights they won't let the debt be bankrupted um, they're saying you have this debt till death um, they're just uh, the ten thousand dollar gift from biden is horrible it's a really bad joke what biden did in my humble opinion, even though I'm a liberal, I find Biden the worst president I've ever seen. He is that his administration is the worst um, and strict. Actually, they're doing the work of the GOP. If I was a fiscal conservative, I think I'd like Biden. But anyhow, um, the situation that we see, if we look back in his history, bankruptcy was used 
to allow people to get out of their debts. Why? Because there was no other way to. Nobody was going to help them make that much money. And we're under the guise that entrepreneurship is going to allow these people with a lot of student loan debt to get out. That, that might be true with somebody with twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, but I know lawyers with three to $400,000 debt, they're not making it. I know people that never was able to get through medical school who have about $300,000 in debt. Um, they are living like paupers now, losing their house and all sorts of stuff. Uh, on top of that, their debt still remains growing interest with growing interest. And so some people have this idea you can't, that student loan debt is different than uh, business debt when you can declare bankruptcy on that. I think not. Because the same argument could be said about anybody that declares bankruptcy. I paid my credit cards. I paid my bank note. Why, why do you get out of not paying your debt and get to declare bankruptcy? Blah, 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 blah. And of course, then the other argument is, um, well, you should have to give up your degree if you declare bankruptcy on your loans. Well, no, the, 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 there's a lot of time loss, too. The person lost a lot of time going to school as well. That's a, a, a value that can be attributed to that student. The time lost, which could have equaled money in the workplace, instead was exchanged to learn from people and learn new things, understand everything from science to government to whatever subject people study. So those are some things for you to think about. Uh, my whole argument base basically relies on um, the argument that you paid your student loan debt uh, means others should also have to pay too is meaningless because the same is said with bankruptcy. This business paid their debt off. They made good on their debt and on their loans. This business didn't. It had to declare bankruptcy and give up some assets or reorganize. Um, it isn't always, bankruptcy isn't always the end of the world. Although some people want to punish people who get into financial trouble because you know, we assume people were lazy and stupid and that's why they went into debt. No, actually a lot of people can be hardworking, giving, helping people out, giving their money away that they really is a loan and they gave their money away and helping people and therefore they don't have the capital and the resources because the, the capital and the resources never fed back into them from our society. Certain people were never given the really good position to pay off their student loan debt, even applying to hundreds of positions as, as myself and others have done, thousands of positions for myself, and never given an interview at any of the big companies, uh, learning the hard way that it really matters which school you go to and how they can open up doors to you. Now, of course, there's always more things that people could do, myself, others, there's always something more you could do to better your situation. However, if you have student loan debt from the 90s and the zero zeros, um, it's, time to, it's time to let go of that and, 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 and consider bankruptcy and student loan debt. And that's based on what we did previously to those who got in debt from uh, back in the old days, back in the time when our country was forming. We let them out of debt um, and or we sent them to jail and they spent a couple of months in jail or, or so and paid off their debt that way. Uh, now people just want hard currency and the big guys are in control and they're making all the arguments. It's just as we feared that the elite would gain control of everything and they've done that. It's just as the, the, the anti-federalists were actually right in many ways, not because I'm a GOP member, I'm, that's, I'm not a GOP member, I'm a liberal, but the anti-federalist position has many valid points to it as do the federalists. And we are in a catch-22 because we have people like, you know, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi and those that can and, and can sit up at Chuck Schumer and uh, uh, even people from Ohio like Marcy Kaptur, who's a Democrat, who've been sitting there for 30 years in power. Uh, there's no need for that. That's a that's a political class of people we've created. We they should not be more than there than eight to ten years at the most, and we should let new blood constantly come in and out of our government, whether they're left or right wingers. We need to. There should not be one direction. Even the conservatives, who I may not like their thinking, they have a right to their opinion. Um, so uh, of course. Freedom of speech is not completely free because there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of notes modifying such in the legal record. So when we just think we can say whatever we want, please 
take note that that may not be true. Never yell fire in a crowded theater. It's time for me to go. Uh, I didn't do that. I'm not in a theater. So take care. House of Prozorov, historical excerpts with modern day transformations. Thank you.